to be able to pay attention enough to know that that action is involuntary. In some horses, you know, it, it could be a foot coming to your face. But when you get a sense of what the horse is and who he is, it gives you a better understanding of uh, how safe you are to proceed. You know, when I approach this side, he's already off balance. You know, he's going to have a hard time giving me this foot without moving that foot. So be aware of it. And it's the same, does he, no, I did not on this side. But it's the same scenario. The horse that you don't know, if you take a couple of minutes to create an environment of relaxation and non-resistance, for a lack of a better term, you know, your job just gets simpler. He's already thinking about giving me that foot. All I've had to do was touch him up here. You know, so they catch on really quickly. And, uh, you know, but I want to watch that tail. And the way he's shifting it. Come here. Give me that foot. Good boy. <clears throat> and often I'll bring it. Right, same thing. I got the foot here. I'm pushing there. I can get in. <clears throat> Don't just assume that every horse is going to let you put their foot in your lap. Oh dear. Position like this on a horse who doesn't really want to be shod, 
It's not a very safe feeling. So what I try to do is every little ounce of tension that I feel in his body, I use it as an opportunity to get myself out of this position. I don't overcommit. You notice that his foot is right yeah. on my knee. It's not in here. And, and I can use his, I can feel it through my back that he's relaxed. I can feel the tension that tells me that he's okay. And if something changes, if you don't pay attention to the change, you're setting yourself up for a potential something to go sideways. And again, when I give it back, just always put it there. You know, I try to make it a habit, especially in a horse I don't know, or a young horse, just to say, hey, give me that foot, please. Thank you. Mary's pulling it away. I'm just going with him until we can find a more comfortable spot. One of the things as well that I find is a bit of a personal pet peeve is, is this. Oh, yeah. That was Cindy's. Elster. Oh, she hated that. You know, she didn't break her coffin bone. She we just get in here and we just walk away. Yeah. It's, as far as I'm concerned, it's particularly disrespectful to the horse. You know, I'm saying, I want you to relax and feel safe with me. But yet I'm going to drop your foot on the cement. So, you know, and we all do it. I still do it occasionally as well. But one of the things that I try, and, but you know, then it's no wonder why they don't want you they to pick snap the foot it. Up again. Yeah, they snatch it, right? Because right? they're going to they're gonna drop it. Because horses will anticipate, they will anticipate pain, they will anticipate reward. So I just find if I'm here, I always just let it yeah. slide down my leg. And I can just give it back to it. You know, in a young horse that may not understand that yet, you know, when I come, you know, well, I'll just get out of there and just quietly give me a foot back. You know, you want to set patterns, behavior patterns, tension patterns that are just easier to deal with. Because if you don't get them worked up here, it's not that you get them worked up there.